should just tell her when you go live, right? I already checked it. You check it, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Kim. We are here, we're gonna paint again. Yay! We're gonna do Moonlight Hope tonight. So make sure that you've got your sponge, your spatula, Q-tips, paper towel, and if you don't have paper towel, you can use wax towel, Kleenex, tissue, wax paper, whatever you've got hanging around the house. And as well, if you're going to use brushes with us tonight, you need a big brush for background work, a medium-sized brush for a little bit of detail work, and a little brush, that little guy right there, for all the little fine detail things. Not necessary to have the brushes, but you are more than welcome to follow along using the brushes as well. Okay, so have fun. And let's get started. So again, this is what we're gonna paint. I'm gonna pull it a little bit closer so you can see it all. Everybody can see it. All right, there we go. And then one, two, three, just like that. I have a blank canvas. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to figure out where my moon is. Okay. So, if you don't have a round shape, I just grabbed the bowl. You can use a glass, a cup, anything that you've got, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to figure out where I want my moon to live. I'm going to let it live on the left-hand side of my canvas about just a little higher than halfway up. And all I did was I drew a round circle shape. And see all that? Just like that. It doesn't have to be perfectly round. If you don't have a round shape or a pencil with you or a pen or anything like that, then by all means, just use your imagination and figure out where your round circle is going to live. Okay, is everybody with me with that one? Perfect. So what now we have to do is we have to, that's where our moon is gonna live. So we don't wanna paint in there right now. But what we wanna do is we wanna paint the background to make it look like there's a little bit of a glow happening around the moon. So for that, I'm gonna use the sponge or my big brush. And I'm going to dip it into white. So grab your white and get some paint on that sponge just like that. And then I'm also going to add just a little bit of black. Black's a really, really strong color, so you don't want to go overload and overboard because you don't want it to be really, really dark. So what we're going to do now is we have to paint our sky. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the shape of the outline that I just put on my canvas and go around the moon. And I don't want it to be super, super dark. And you'll notice that as I'm doing this, I'm getting lighter and different colors. And that's what I want. I don't want it to blend in together and be all one color. Okay, so I already know that I've got lots of black on my sponge. So now I'm just going to add just white. Because I've got lots of black on my canvas. And I can pull that color and bring it around just like that. And I'm going in a little bit of a circular pattern. And it's okay, I overlapped my pencil mark. That's okay, because we're gonna fix that up later. And you'll notice that it's just streaky. And it's just white this time again. And I'm just going in a round circle. It's a little bit gray, but it's not really really dark okay and I'm also going to paint the edges of my canvas because what happens to canvas over time is that it shrinks so you want to have a nice crisp canvas that's not going to shrink and if you paint the edges it'll stop that from happening okay just like that okay 
Okay, does everybody see where I'm going with that? All right, so now that we've got our round circular glow from the moon, now we have to go along the bottom. And again, I'm gonna grab a little tiny bit of black with my white. And now I'm just gonna go in a straight line Back and forth, just figure out where my horizon is going to live. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because we're going to do some fun stuff to that afterwards. And there's my horizon line. So, can everybody see that now? I've got a round circle that's kind of outlining the moon, and then I've got my darker ground that's going straight across from side to side. Okay, I think everybody's got that. So now what we have to do is we have to paint some stars in the sky. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna take a single Q-tip or my little brush or the back end of a brush or the back end of a pencil or whatever you've got. And you're just gonna dip it into the white. Just the end, doesn't have to have a whole lot of paint on it, just like Can that. Slow down, please, it's asking. Okay. So just gonna dip some white. And I'm just gonna go and dot kind of all over the place in the sky. To make stars and you'll notice that they don't look they're not they're just kind of random they're just kind of there I'll we'll go put a few more in And that's my stars, just like that. So I want you to guys go ahead, make some stars. You'll notice that some are brighter than others, and that's what we want it to look like. We don't want everything to look all the same. And already it's starting to look like a painting, just like that. It's been a challenge coming up with different paintings to use because I know not everybody has paint or brushes. And so using different things around the house is a great way to get your creative juices flowing. And then you can see some different things happening. So we've got our ground. We've got our sky, we've got our space for our moon. Everybody with me and you can see all that? Perfect. So now what we're gonna do is now we have to fill in our moon shape a little bit. So for that, I'm gonna use a piece of paper towel. Like I said, you don't have to have paper towel. You can have wax paper, newspaper, sponge, a tissue, Kleenex, whatever you've got around the house. And I'm just going to crinkle it all up into a ball, just like that. Packaging from Amazon. <laughs> Packaging from Amazon, yep. Anything that you've got that's that you can crinkle up and make a little bit of a ball with. Because you know the moon's not totally flat, it does have texture in it. And I will wait for everybody to get caught up. Can you slow down our screen? I just saw that. I don't know if it froze. I was just like waiting because I thought it was not too quick. 
And then what's going to happen, sometimes what happens with Facebook, it's a little bit funky. And if we lose the live feed, just hang on and hang tight because I've got my other phone here and we'll hook right back up and go live again, okay? So just deep breath and I will be pop right back on. Just sometimes when we did our last live feed, everything went a little bit funky. Okay, so what I did is I just grabbed some white paint on my little crinkled up paper towel and I'm just gonna start filling in my moon. Just like that. I'm just dabbing it on and dabbing it right back off. Maybe you are frozen. Okay, so we're just dabbing in and around the moon, just like that. So again, it's just crinkled up paper towel, a little bit of white paint on it. And we're just dabbing in and around the moon. So again, like I said, if something happens and the Facebook feed doesn't drop or that doesn't, it freezes or Shuts down, just hang tight and I'll get the second one back up, okay? So with the stars, how we did the stars is we just took a single Q-tip or a pencil or the end of a brush, anything that you've got, and you just dab it onto the canvas with the white paint. Okay, so we're going to take that same white can't that white same white Q-tip that we did the stars, and I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to use the other side now, and I'm going to add a little bit of white paint to it. So white paint, just like that, and I'm just going to round out my moon now and just make it a little more round, just around the edges. That's all, and it doesn't have to be perfectly round, just like that. Just so I know where my moon's going to live. Okay. So we know that that's where our moon is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit more white paint just like that. Everybody can see that I just got a little bit of more white paint on there. And then I'm going to grab just the tiniest, tiniest bit of black. Just see, teeny, teeny, tiny, 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 tiny. And now I'm going to put a little bit of shadow on my moon. So you see it's pretty strong right now. It's pretty goopy. So I'm just going to take my towel and I'm going to kind of fold it up a little bit so some of the paint has disappeared. And I'm just using a clean, dry spot now. And now I'm going to blend that in. And I'm just dabbing again. And you, because you've already got the white paint on there, it just kind of softens that all up. Just like that. And if it looks a little too dark to you, then add a little more white paint and just go over top of it. Just like that. So we've done our background with our sponge and go right around the moon shape. We've taken that same sponge and gone straight across the bottom now and filled out our bottom part. And then we've filled in our moon with our white paint, paper towel, and then added a little bit of black and gave us shadows on the moon. OK, 
Okay, so we've got background with some stars, some ground, and the moon. All right, so the next step is taking that same towel or a new piece. I'm gonna use a new piece. And you're gonna do the opposite. So again, crinkling it all up into a ball, just like that. And I'm gonna grab about 50-50 black and 50-50 white. So white first, so we don't mech up our white. And then grab the black paint. And then I went and grabbed in and grabbed white again. So I've got white, black, and white. Okay, just like that. And now what's gonna happen is that we've made our little line that goes right across our painting, right there, our horizon line. So now we have to add something to the horizon line. So for this, we're gonna add some shrubs or some trees or whatever you want them to call, be. And because they're abstract looking, that's all you have to do is make them abstract. And you're just gonna dab again right along that line. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if it goes over the moon, that's okay too. We want it to go over the moon a little bit because that gives us interest. And all I'm doing is I'm just moving my, see how I'm kind of twisting my hand as I'm going across the canvas. And I'm kind of going back and forth. And now we have our background cheese, just like that. So we have background with stars. We've done our land. We've done our moon. And now we've just done our background trees. Just like that. Everybody feeling comfortable with that so far? Look at that. Isn't it? Amazing how fast things come together. So now what we have to do, once we get all, all our background done, and don't be too concerned about it. I know there's some of my type A's out there that are really worried and they want to do it exactly the way I'm doing it. It's okay, you don't have to. Your world is different than my world. And I'm just going to let you keep going. And then you can figure out where you want your trees to live okay don't try not to overthink it guys because it's it's once you just kind of let yourself go you're going to find that you'll have nicer results We've got people zooming in from, got FaceTime Live people joining us from New Brunswick. Hi, New Brunswick. We've got people joining in from Calgary. Hi, Calgary. We've got people joining in from Winnipeg. Hi, Winnipeg. We've got people joining in from all different parts of Ontario. So this is really exciting and it's a lot of fun. And my goal here is just to give somebody a little bit of a reason to smile and a way to enjoy their evenings and come together, but still be socially responsible. Oh, BC. oh, hi, BC. Welcome. This is exciting. I'm really excited that everybody's joining in to do this with us. All right, so have we got our trees all ready and we're ready for the next step? Okay, so the next step, we're gonna use our rubber spatula or our big brush, whatever you've got. Do, 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 do. And now we have to figure out where our tree is gonna live. Hello, Mississauga, hello, Brooklyn. We got lots of really fun places from all over. All right, so what I've done now is I've just loaded up our rubber spatula with our black paint. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I've gotta figure out where the rocks are that my tree is gonna live on. Okay. 
So we've got our bottom that's just, we've used the sponge and gone left to right. We don't wanna cover all of this up because we wanna create some interest. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my rubber spatula and I'm just gonna kind of draw right over my trees, right over my background. And it's gonna kind of come down in a little bit of a V. And remember rocks aren't perfectly straight. So you want to make some interest there. Maybe this little rock lives up here like this, and this little one goes like this. And it kind of comes down into a little bit of a valley. And then our valley's going to move, meander just kind of down across the bottom. We'll add some more paint, and we'll go along like this. And maybe it comes up just a little bit over on the side over here. Okay, so we've got a nice big black line. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pull that black paint down. And we're going to fill that all in. So I'm just painting downwards. Filling all that area in with black paint. It doesn't have to be solid black. It's okay if it's not, because it can be shadows and light, because every place has a little bit of shadow and a little bit of light is they're opposites. Or you can't have shadow without light. And just like that. And then don't forget, we've got a paint on the sides. So we cover our canvas up. And then you can flip and do the bottom later if you want. Okay, so now we've got our rocks where our tree is going to live. Everybody just take your time and just fill your rocks all in there. Okay, so we've got, so what you do with painting is that you work from the back to the front. So we've done our background, our sky is our first background, then our moon, then our trees, our water or our land, whatever you want to call it. And now we've got our rocks in the foreground. Okay. So now's the time that you can have a look at this and go, okay, now do I want to fill my moon in a little bit more? Do I like it the way it is? And I'm going to just take a little bit of white and I'm just going to come down to the bottom again. And I'm just going to fill it in just a little bit because I want it to be a little bit separate. So all I'm doing is taking a white Q-tip. And just kind of going around my moon. It's almost like a halo effect that I'm giving my moon. Okay, just like that. All right, you guys let me know when you are ready to move on to the next step. And we will do that. So the next step is we have to figure out where our tree is going to live.
How we doing, guys? Are we everybody good? We're feeling good? The rock will not be dry. The rock is still wet. Okay. And that's okay. We want the rock. To, the rock can be wet. It's all good. Because it'll be dry by the time we get to going to where we need to be going. So the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out where our tree is going to live. So you've got two options. You've got your brush or you've got another q-tip. Okay, so trees are interesting creatures. We love trees because trees are full of life and full of energy and you want your tree to have lots of twists and turns in it because you want your tree to be interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both for this one so that you can see. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dip our Q-tip into black. Can you show which brush again? Please? Just a medium-sized brush. Nothing fancy. It's your medium brush. Okay? And we want our tree to have some movement to it because movement gives the tree energy. So we're going to, and now this is going to be scary. I know. I totally get it. I understand because this is a really scary step now. Background, we got the background covered. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to figure out where our tree is going to live. And for this, you want your tree to meander. So I kind of always think, all right, so I want my tree to kind of look like a backwards elongated S. So if I know if I start right by the moon, I'm going to kind of just move in a backwards S pattern. and come down to the rocks, just like that. So it's a stretched out backwards S. Everybody with me? I know that's a really, 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 really scary thing. I get it, I totally get it. Because we have lots of people that are afraid to make a mistake. They think they're gonna make a mistake. But guess what? There's no such thing as mistakes. It's all fixable. Okay, can everybody see? So I started at the edge of the moon and I just went into a backwards S shape. And I didn't go all the way down to the rock. I stopped a little bit. Just shy of the rock. Okay, that wasn't so bad, was it? The bottom horizon, it was just back and forth with the sponge with white and a little bit of black on it. So just back and forth. Just take your sponge and just go back and forth, just like that. So now that we have our backwards S, we kind of have to finish that off. So now I'm going to go back up the opposite way. And as I'm going up, I'm getting, I'm touching lighter and lighter and lighter. So you'll notice that the paint looks a little bit lighter as I go up higher. All right, so now that we've got, that's our basic trunk of our tree right there. So now we have to figure out and decide where we want branches to live. So maybe I'll have a branch that'll come up over here. And again, like I said, as I get closer to the edge, I lift up my Q-tip and it just makes it lighter. 
makes the line a little bit thinner. Okay, and maybe I want another one to live over here. So it's going to go like that. And maybe I want a branch to come out over here. And you'll notice they're not straight. They're kind of wiggly piggly because that's what gives your tree interest. Remember our trees, we don't want our trees to be perfectly straight. And maybe we want another branch to come here. And maybe we want another branch to come up here. And maybe another one that's going to live over here. Those are our branches. Okay. So the thing about trees, if you look at trees in nature, trees have always got wider bases and narrower tops. So now what we have to do is we have to take our black Q-tip again and we have to fill in our trunk. Because it looks, this looks kind of funny with just our tree hanging out here with just some lines on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make another outline on the other side of the first line that I made. So now I've got a thicker line there. So it looks like a double line. Everybody see that? So there's my original line that I started with. And then I went to the right of it and I put in another line beside it. Okay, and then I'm going to continue that line up, but I'm going to get a little bit narrower as I go up. So it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller as I go up. Does that make sense for everybody? So once I've done that line, now I'm going to fill it in. It's just like a coloring book. Now you're going to fill in the lines. Just like that. And now you'll notice as I'm getting closer to the bottom, I'm not filling that all in. I want to leave that is we want to be able to see the roots. Okay, how's that look for everybody? Does that make sense? Okay. okay. How's that look for everybody? Does that make sense? So what I want to do now is I've got to do the same thing with all of my branches because now our trunk is wide. We worked up to a small trunk. Now we have to make this one a little bit wider, just at the base, just like that. So it goes from wide to narrow. And see this guy's pretty skinny here so we need to make him a little bit wider too. So go from wide up to narrow. This guy's pretty wide already so we just need to make him a little bit wider and then we're going to make him a little bit narrower up there like that. And you'll notice see my my Q-tip's starting to get a little bit mushy, so I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna grab a fresh one. And just into the black paint, and again, wider at the bottom, and skinnier as we go up. 
and then a little bit wider at the bottom and skinnier as we go up and then wider skinny as we go up So now it's starting to look a little bit more like a tree. Not quite almost, but almost. We're getting there. <laughs> I think I want to add one more branch, maybe right here. Just a little guy. As I'm looking at this. Just like that. So now, once we've got our trunk all kind of laid out, it almost looks like a tree, but not quite like a tree. And for that, we're either going to use our little tiny brush, or we're going to continue to use our Q-tip. And we have to make some little small branches. So I'll show you with the little brush first. So you're just going to grab a little bit of paint, and you're just going to make a few little branches and you're barely touching the canvas. I want you to touch really, really lightly. Just really lightly. Just like that. Okay. A lot of these are going to disappear, but it gives you an anchor point. So same thing with the Q-tip. You're going to just dip a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of paint on it. Okay. Just a teeny, tiny little bit. And you're going to make your branches, but you're barely going to touch the canvas. Very, very lightly. Just like that. Does that make sense for everybody? Let me know. So again, tiny little bit of paint and you're just going to make a few little barely touching the canvas branches barely touching barely touching a few up here And you'll notice they're not solid black. That's okay. They don't need to be. That's the branches for our tree. How's everybody feeling about that so far? Okay, we're going to do the same thing now down at the bottom. Because remember I said we have to have our roots attached to our rock. So I'm going to come down from where we stopped painting. And I'm gonna just start adding our roots. And then once you have all your roots drawn, then you can fill in the rest of your trunk. like that. Okay. 
And that's the base of our tree. All right, guys, tell me how we're doing. Let me know so I can know whether to wait here for you or to move on to the next next thing that we're going to do. I wait, no problem. It's okay. We'll let it all dry. All right. So if you guys are liking these and you want me to do these every week, every Tuesday at seven, or do you want me to keep continuing on with every other week? Just let me know. I'm going to put a po uh, poll up on my Facebook page tomorrow and you can uh, let me know what you prefer. If you want to keep doing these every other week, or if you want to do them every Tuesday at 7, we can make it a standing date. I'm totally good with that. Don't forget to uh, go ahead and let me know on the survey when I post it tomorrow, okay? Every week at seven. All right, while we're waiting for everybody to get, get caught up, the next thing we have to do now is that we have to decide where our bank is, what our bank's going to look like. Do we want it to look straight? Do we want it to look a little bit curved? Do we want this to be water? It's up to you now which way you want this to work. So normally when you're looking across the horizon at something far away, the bottom is always darker than what's above it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the black with the Q-tip again and I'm just gonna make a little bit of a line, not a perfect line, just a little bit of a line along my shore. Because I think I'm gonna make this look like water tonight. And just like that, I've got a little bit of a shoreline. And you'll notice that, that making that a little bit darker, that makes a difference in how that looks to the eye. So what I also want to do is I want to flip that Q-tip over and I'm going to use the empty side. And I'm going to just use my white, just like that. And now I want to make it look a little bit like water. So now I'm just going to kind of go right in underneath that black line that I just did and give a couple of quick little dabs, just kind of here and there. Not everywhere along that line, just in a couple of spots. Just to kind of give it the illusion of water that's kind of breaking on the shore. And then with that being said, I maybe also want to put a couple of little lines kind of in here. I'm just going straight across, very, very faintly touching the canvas. So it kind of like, looks like little ripples of water. And you'll notice they're straight because water travels straight, doesn't travel on an angle. And now we have some water lines. So we've just given our background a little bit more interest just by doing those couple of little things. We've got dark at the base, a little bit of water lapping up against the shore, and a few little waves that are kind of rippling in the water. How's that working for everybody?
All right, so who's all using teal for our next step? Because I know that some people have different colors. Some people have chosen to make different co their trees different colors. This is where the fun starts. Now, you'll notice that I've got a whole bunch of different bundles. I've got bundles of Q-tips now. And all I've done is I've taken some tape and I've taped them together. If you don't have tape, you can just hold them in bunches with your hand. Or if you've got elastics, don't worry about it. Just whatever works best for you, okay? It doesn't have to be, and they're all different sizes. This one's got a whole bunch in it. This one's got only a few in it. This one's only got three in it. And that's okay. They can be all different whichever way it works for you. Okay. So like I said, if you don't have tape and you haven't taped them together, that's okay. We can certainly make it work. You just have to hold, grab a bunch and just hold them in your hand, just like that. So now this is where the fun part comes in. So these typical trees, they're, they're similar to a bonsai tree is what I figure that this is what this tree is supposed to look like. And with most bonsai trees, the bottom or the base of the tree is very flat and then they kind of go up into like little puffy marshmallows for lack of a better term. So we want our tree to have some interest in it. So when you start dabbing with the teal color, I'll accept mine's teal. I know somebody's using red tonight. I know somebody's using purple. So I can't wait to see what you guys all come up with. You're just going to dip and you're going to dab. And if you get a little bit of the black, if, you're, if your branches aren't quite dry, that's okay because that's just going to give you interest in your trees. And then we still have our white left over and that's going to give us some highlights. Okay. Again, I know this is scary because sometimes you're not used to painting. So you'll notice I've just grabbed some teal just like that. And we're going to start up here with this one. And you ready? Here we go. Are we ready? All right. So we're just going to dab right over the branches. I don't want to see the branches, just the illusion of the branches. And you'll notice that I'm not doing it. It doesn't have to be really heavy. It's heavier in some spots than it is in the others. And that's okay. And you'll notice that as I'm getting out towards the edge, the lines get a little bit lighter, a little bit softer. And just like that, we have leaves on our trees. How's that work for everybody? Give it a shot. Let me know how you're feeling. Good. Are we feeling okay? Let me know. I know everybody's concentrating. Totally get it. It's good. That's good. That means that you're doing, you're doing it and you're enjoying it. Excellent. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you for the for the information because I don't want to go too fast for anybody either. So now I've grabbed some more teal and I'm going to move on to the next spot. So this one, oh my gosh, we're going to go right over our moon, but we want to because the moon is part of our background. So again, I'm just grabbing teal and I'm banging it all on just like that. Again, I'm going over those branches. The branches are just an illusion. You just don't want to see them very very much of them. Look at that. Oh, I'm going right over top of that big branch. Just like that. And it's okay if it's goopy. See, you just keep moving the paint around if it gets a little goopy. Just like that. And look at, there's some white space in there, which is good because then it looks like you can see through the leaves because when you're out walking and you go walk by trees and around trees 
you see through the trees. You don't, it's not always a big blanket of leaves, right? You get to see the sky in between the leaves and that's what we want. Okay. So I'm gonna just, I got a couple of little guys that are just kind of living here, a couple of little branches. So I'm just gonna do a quick little add just like that. And then, of course, we've got these branches over here that are living over top of our moon, so we have to do the same thing. And if they overlap and they hop in, one hops into the other, that's okay. See how those two kind of blended together, those two clumps? We want that because that gives interest to the eye as well. Okay. And this one, we want these ones to kind of live, like we want this to be a big clump. So it's gonna kind of roll over here too. And it's gonna come down over top of this branch. And you'll notice I'm picking up a little bit of black and that's okay because it gives it some shadow. And that's the next section of our tree. So don't forget our branches. We did a backwards S. And then we moved out and we just kind of figured where they wanted to live. And then we made our little branches by barely touching. And then once we did our first line, we came back in with our second line and then filled everything in. So you'll notice that this one's starting to look a little bit goopy. I've got lots of color on that. So I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to use the other side because it's all nice and clean now. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep pouncing and I'm just going to keep adding my colors, with my leaves. And this is going right off the edge. That's good. We want it to go right off the edge. And it's nice and full and you can decide how big or how little you want your leaves to be and this is going to go right over top of our trunk right there in that section there because we want that one to be a nice big full one and it's up to you you guys can decide how big or how little you want each of your clumps of leaves to be. Okay, so this one again, I got a little bit of black on it, so I'm gonna set it down and I'm gonna pick up another clump of Q-tips. And then I've got this little guy right here. He's going to live right there. Okay, how we doing? So guys, this is a lot of fun. I'm having a blast doing this. I'm waiting for you guys to make sure that you're doing all right and that you're getting caught up. And if you're interested and you wanna do a socially acceptable party while you are at home and you wanna to get together and do it with your family and your friends, we can do that. Uh, you can do it through a Zoom meeting. So let me know if that's something that you're interested in doing. We can also do that too. 
and uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm actually doing one on Friday for a family. They're celebrating a da their daughter's birthday, and they're all going to paint together. It's a, an honor for me to be part of that and to be able to do that with them so that they can celebrate a little bit differently this year. But I am more than happy to do that if you want to do something private because I think this is going to be going on for a little bit of time. And if this is the way that we're going to get together and celebrate and get creative together, I'm totally good with that. So we've got a few clumps of leaves starting to happen. I'm going to add a little bit more up here because I've still got some branches to fill in. And you don't have to overthink this. Like I said, just go really quickly. Just kind of give it a little bit of love. Doesn't have to be super perfect, super neat. Doesn't have to look like mine. Everybody has their own view of the world and their own way of looking at things. And I want you just to be happy. Okay. Alright, so we're doing that. Okay. okay, so I'm going to grab just these last little lumps. Now, if you guys are having fun and you're liking this and you don't have everything, just reach out to me because I am doing contactless porch pickup for the paint to go kits. Not necessary by any stretch of the imagination. But if you want the stuff, I'm more than happy to supply all of that to you. Don't forget to post your pictures in the event page afterwards as well. Because I would really love to see how you guys made out tonight with all of our with our painting. And then, you know what? I think that I want to put a little... So, I look, all my branches are all covered up. But over here, I don't have a branch. But you know what? I'm going to pretend like I have a branch. And I'm just going to give it a quick little... Just a quick little one right here. Just over top of the trunk. Just like that. So, you can put your leaves or flowers or whatever you want to call them you can put them everywhere and anywhere that you want on your tree and I'm looking at this one and I think he needs to be a little bit bigger so I'm going to go down like this go. Kind of like my tree, the way it lives right now. So just take your time. And if you get a chance, go and have a look at my gallery on my Facebook page and you can see all the different paintings that we do and what we that you can choose from. Uh, this is a fun way to do something with the kids if you want to do it, if you want the kids to be a little bit busy. So let me know, guys. Let me know where you, when you get to this pot where you're you're adding all your leaves, because we get to add a little bit more to these. And if you didn't use all your clumps of Q-tips, that's okay. I just keep I switch mine out really a lot, <laughs> just because that's just who I am. And this is the next one we're going to use. How are all my type A's doing out there today? I know I've got some type A personalities that are in this group. I know I, I'm positive I do that they're just 
stressing over it and wanting it to be the exactly perfect. How we doing guys? Excellent. All right. So if you're at the same spot where I am, guess what? Now we get to add some white and some highlights because of course this looks pretty as it is, but now we need to give it a little bit of a pop. All right. So now I'm going to take my little clump of Q-tips and I'm going to add a little bit of white because a lot of this teal is still wet. All right. So I'm just going to go in, let me get into this one because I think that my highlight should live at the top of my trees. And I'm going to just kind of go like this. And you'll notice I'm picking up the teal at the same time. And I want to do that. And a little bit more white. And I'm just moving that white around. And you'll notice just by me doing that, I've given that leaf, that branch a little bit of depth now to it. So again, just pick up some white. And if you guys have got any questions, just write them out. Let me know. I'm here to answer them. Again, just a little bit of white. Just on a, in a few spots. It doesn't have to be in any place perfect. And just like that. And then I'm going to go on to this little guy here. And I'm going to add a little bit of white in here and a little bit of white over here. You'll notice I'm just tabbing up and down quickly. Tap, 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 tap. And see it's starting to look a little bit goopy. So I'm going to pick up some more. Another one of my bunches and I'm just going to grab some white and I'm just going to dab around and in and on my leaves again. Just like that. And don't forget, like if you're, if you're, Paint is wet, that's good because it just kind of blends and makes the teal a little softer, makes the white a little softer. It doesn't have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm just grabbing white and just zipping along. little bits of white just like that and this one needs a little bit of white in it This one up here. And just kind of moving the Q-tips around as I'm going, just to give it a little bit of depth. Okay, so just add your highlights, guys. And that kind of gives you two or three different colors of leaves depending on if you picked up any black or but you can notice that as you'll as things are drying you'll see you'll start to see some of your branches peek through and that's what you want because again that gives it a little bit of interest a little bit of life
We're almost done, guys. How we doing? How's everybody doing? You still with me? How we doing? Okay, so you'll notice that there's what, and it's not perfectly blended. If you look at some of the different spots, and again, like I said, my world is different than your world, and it's okay. Everybody has different visions of what they see. Okay, so there's only two more things that we have to do. So let me know when you guys are good to go, and we'll move on to the next spot, the next thing that we have to do. Again, I'd love to see your finished products. If you want to take a picture of yourself with your masterpiece and post it in the event, tag me so I can see which, all your great pieces of artwork that you're creating. I would love to do that. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is our tree looks very, very dark. And we want it to look dark, but we also have to give it a little bit of life as well. So on our branch, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take a single Q-tip or our little brush with a little bit of white and we're just gonna kind of make little kind of happy faces. And if you've got wet, if you've got a little bit of black in there, that's okay. And you'll notice that I'm just softening up a few spots on the trunk with quick little happy faces. And that makes it a little bit round, makes it look a little bit round. Just like that, quick little flicks. Just like that. And then all of a sudden, you have some depth on the trunk of your tree. Just that tiny little bit of paint makes a big, big difference. Okay. How are we doing, guys? Everybody still with me? This is going to stay up for a week on my Facebook page. So again... You're going to take one of your Q-tips or your little brush and a little bit of white and you're just going to make little flicks, almost like a happy face, down the one side of your trunk. You decide what side it's going to live in. And if there's black, if your black is still wet, that's okay. We want it to be a little bit and I'm just putting a little bit of light and maybe a couple up in here. And all that's doing is it's just creating some depth and some movement on your tree trunk. Okay. The last thing that we have to do is we have to have a little few petals just kind of falling off of our tree. So I'm taking a single Q-tip with a little bit of teal on it. And I'm just going to make some little flicks kind of in the sky, falling down. Maybe one here and in the water. And that's it. So a few little flicks with your teal. just to give the illusion of some falling petals out of the sky. Okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is every good artist needs to sign their painting. Because I'm gonna sign my painting, just my initials. 
And that's it, guys. That's Moonlight Hope. Take your time. Like I said, this is going to be back up. We're going to keep this up on our fa my Facebook page for the next week. I can't wait to see how everybody does. And I can't wait to see your creations. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. Uh, the next one we're going to do is scheduled for May 12th. But if I get an overwhelming response that we're going to do this weekly, I'll do another one next week. And the one on May 12th is a special request. And it is a summer campfire. Okay. Thank you, guys. I appreciate every single one of you. I am very honored and very blessed that you decide to spend some of your time with me. And please feel free to share with your friends, share with your family. And like I said, if you want to do this privately, we can certainly do that. But I would love to have you come and join us again. I do have Instagram. I am at thepaintdiva1. All okay. So again, at the paint diva, the number one. Thank you guys. Can't wait to see. And like I said, if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out. Bless you all. Stay safe. Take care.